All right, Kaylin. Well, today we're going to look at a really interesting chemical change using something very simple that we use probably just about every day, a paper towel. I've, just, I've cut a little piece of one here. But we're going to actually use some chemicals to change the properties of this. We know if a chemical change happens, what happens as a result of it? makes a new substance. Right, it forms some kind of new substance. So we're actually going to take this paper and now you know you've probably seen paper burn. Paper towels tend to burn fairly slowly. Not very exciting, right? But it'll burn. It'll eventually burn up. And once it's done, it'll leave a little bit of ash behind, right? Just kind of those little bits of charred paper that remain. So Basically, we, we know also that paper products come from what? Do you, know, do you know where our paper comes from? Trees. Yeah, trees and plants, right? It's plant fiber. Basically, it's called cellulose. And you can see when it burns, actually, it's got, you see all those little kind of patterns in there? That's actually the cellulose that you're able to see once it chars. You can kind of sort of see, see some of that in the paper that remains behind. So it burns, but it's not, I'd say, a very interesting burn, and it's definitely not a very complete form of combustion. It burns, it kind of burns out, and you've still got some things left. But through a chemical reaction, we're going to be able to actually change the way that this paper burns. Now, to do that, we're going to need a couple pretty dangerous chemicals, so we're going to put our goggles on first. Uh, we're going to be working today with two types of acid. We're going to be using some sulfuric acid, and we're going to be using some nitric acid. And we're going to use a reaction. Really, the reaction taking place is going to happen between the nitric acid and the cellulose in the paper towel. And it's going to change it into what we call nitrocellulose. And we're going to make some of that, and then we'll kind of look at how it reacts a little bit differently when we burn it. Now, one thing, before we can start mixing these, before we can start reacting it, we want it to be very cold. So we're actually, we're going to need to store it in the freezer for about 30 minutes. We actually want to get the temperature of both of these acids down below what would be freezing point of water. So we want to get them colder than zero degrees. Um, these particular acids actually don't freeze until they get much lower. The sulfuric and nitric uh, will freeze around uh, minus 55 and minus 65 degrees Celsius. So they won't freeze while they're in the freezer, but they will cool down. And it's going to help this reaction work a little bit better. Um, again, the nitric acid will be reacting with the paper towel. Sulfuric acid will be working as our catalyst. So we're going to take these, we're going to set them in the freezer. We'll check back in about 30 minutes and finish it up, all right? Okay, okay well, we've got our, got our little pieces of paper cut here, our, our paper towel and several little thin strips. And what we're going to do, we've got our acids out of the freezer, and they're both cooled down. They're about 10 degrees below zero. And we want to mix these together now. Because again, it's the nitric acid here that actually causes the chemical change. But the sulfuric acid works as our catalyst that kind of speeds up the process. So we're going to pour these into our little beaker here and mix them together. And we're just going to take, and I'll let you take, go ahead and put maybe four or five of those little pieces of paper down in the bottom of that glass container. Separate. Yeah, you can kind of keep them together. That'll be fine. And you may need to kind of fold them a little bit. That'll be good probably for now. We can add some more after we, after we get those. There you go. Just put them down in there. And you might need to kind of fold it up a little bit and that'll be okay too. So we're going to go ahead we're going to add our acids. And as we do, of course, paper towel is very absorbent, so it's going to start soaking that up. And as it begins soaking in, that chemical change will start taking place. I'm going to take these over here and we'll just add a few more, a little bit at a time. Just want to make sure we use the, the glass to get that down in there so we don't get it on our fingers. But this process takes about, oh, 10 to 15 minutes for the reaction to completely take place. We'll put one more. I think that'll be good. And we're just going to put a little watch glass over the top of it. And we're going to let that sit about 15 minutes and we'll come back and show you how we can get this cleaned up and get ready to see the chemical change that's happened. All right? 
Caitlin, we've had this sitting now probably, I'd say, a good 15 minutes, and it's definitely soaked up a lot of that nitric acid. And again, as it sits there, chemical reactions happening. You see, it's a lot you know, kind of stiffer looking than it was, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, it's definitely not as flexible, so some changes have happened. But in order to really see these, we need to, first of all, rinse this off really good, because it does have some dangerous acids on it, and we don't want to reach in and touch it yet. So let's just walk over here to the sink. First, we're going to rinse it out. And if you just want to move down kind of to the end of the counter, we're just going to start rinsing this out. And we need to let water run over it for several minutes. But something else we're going to do, I've got some baking soda there. And we can actually add some baking soda into here. And that will work. It's an it's a alkaline material, so it's going to work to kind of neutralize that acid. Well, we've given this time to dry out. And it dry, like I say, dries pretty quick. Took it maybe 10 minutes. But, Kaylin, if you can get your, your picker tongs there and just hold on to that, kind of hold it at the bottom, and hold it up just a little bit about right there. And what we're going to do, I'm going to light this, okay? And we saw how the original paper towel burned. It burned pretty slowly. It left a lot of ashes and things behind. But in the case of our nitrocellulose, we also have another name for this. It's called flash paper because it burns very quickly. It burns pretty bright. And it also doesn't leave ashes behind when it burns. So let's just light it and watch what happens. So when we light it, you see it's sparking a lot, but once it burns up, there's not really anything left, is there, except about that little bit that you're holding on to. And in fact, if I take this and hold it in my hands when I light it, I can actually hold it right here, drop it, and by the time it gets to the ground, it's burned up. Pretty neat, huh? You want to do another one? There you go. All right, quick burning. Flash paper. Of course, when the fire got back to where you had it clamped, it kind of burned out, but we can, you know, like that, let it go, Let's get it there on the table, and let it finish burning out. So, a really neat chemical change. Again, just that process of using nitric acid to change our regular cellulose in the paper towel into flash paper, nitrocellulose. Cool stuff.